Aloha, and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My very special guest today is a phenomenal musician, composer, and producer. He was born in Munich, Germany, where as a teenager, he picked up his first guitar. As a solo artist for over 20 years, he has received many accolades along the way, which include Billboard scoring the esteemed charts song of the decade from 2000 to 2010. This amazing artist has developed a name in music production, producing several top 20 Billboard hits for himself and other artists. He has headlined at some of the largest clubs and festivals across the United States and Europe throughout his spectacular career and has recorded and shared the stage with other amazing artists such as Dave Koz, George Benson, The Temptations, Rick Braun, Shante Moore, Nathan East, and the list goes on. I am so excited to have him here today, especially since it's my birthday. Please, let's welcome and meet Niels to the show. Aloha, Niels. How Happy are birthday. you? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It is an honor for well, me to be here with you. On your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy to be here with you. Um, so we're going to get this party started, like I like to say, all right? And of course, like everybody wants to know, how did you get your start in music? Um, to really, the, the, I love doing music. I, I did. Uh, I played music when I was a teenager, played in bands. But to, to really get serious about it, I that step I took when I actually uh, came to Los Angeles to study music in the 80s um, and I studied uh, at Musicians Institute for one year and um, and after that I studied composition and arrangement at the Grove School of Music and I met a friend who had a recording studio started working at studios uh, um, you know and and it's just kept on going from there wow now do you play any other instruments or do you just play the guitar I play a little bit uh, piano I'm not like not pianistic stuff, but you know, to lay out some chords, it's like my typewriting. I play two, three chords, and then I punch in for the next two. <laughs> and um, and I uh, play a little bit bass, or um, you know, I can lay down a bass line. But uh, I, I wouldn't consider myself neither a, guitar, uh, a bassist or a keyboard player. It's just that uh, it helps me with production to lay out certain parts. Uh, I'm mainly a guitarist. You grew up in Germany. What type of music did you listen to in your household? Well, at home, we listened to classical music. My parents liked classical music. I hated it. Um, I wanted to hear more pop and R <laughs> music and stuff like that. <laughs> but, you know, in retrospect, maybe it was a good education uh, to get the uh, 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 I know, subconscious uh, sense of form and melody that helped me with me later with my writing. You know, when I was a teenager, then I, and I saw my first stuff that I listened to was rock music. I listened to bands like Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple. And, um, you know, and, and when that's when I started playing in bands, um, um, doing high school gigs and and um, and so forth. So that was my very first beginnings. I moved on from there when I met, when when the, it was kind of, we called a progressive rock band that fell apart and the, and the drummer asked me, hey, Niels, do you want to start a funk band? And I was, uh, and I was asking, what is funk? Mm -hmm. I had no idea what funk was at that time, <laughs> which is weird. But you got to understand, growing up in Germany, we were not exposed to the music. The only thing we heard is what we were picking up. We were actually getting music by going to record stores and listening to albums in there. So he brings me over to the space player's house. He had like a collection like there was like five yards long from Ohio players to Parliament to... Wow. And he put on the first thing he put on was Get Away by Earth and Fire. And I totally lost my mind because I loved every second of it. And, and it was like a, I was like a kid that got I was on the key to a candy store. Uh, uh, there was so much great music there that never knew existed, but I loved it. And I ate it up and, and was working on that for the next few years uh, exclusively. <laughs> Look, my, to my viewers, if you have not heard Niels play, I'm telling you, you really need to go on YouTube, go on Spotify, and we're going to talk about that later. But you really need to hear him play. I absolutely love your your music. Now I know you just talked about um, you. You listen to Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple, and of right. course the R and B. 
But as a musician, you play different kinds of music, right? So yeah. what is your favorite genre to play? I think it's a toss up between classic rock and roll and, and, and funky R&B. Okay. And actually the music that I'm doing, which is kind of funky R&B instrumental yeah. because I don't sing. So I, I sing through my guitar. That's my voice. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, um, I'm very happy in what I'm doing right now. Well, we, you know, I jam to your music all the time. I can tell you that right, <laughs> right now. Now let's get a little bit into your um, discography, okay? So mm -hmm. 1998 was your first album, correct? Yes, and sir. that was your debut album entitled Blue Planet. That's right. And I was the only unknown person on that record. <laughs> I, a, I did a duet. I had a duet with George Benson on this album. Uh -huh. I got Saida Garrett, Shanti Moore, Bobby Lyle, um, uh, Abla Boreal, uh, uh, you name it, everybody is on this record. Gerald Albright. Wow. Paul Jackson Jr. played on it. And uh, yeah, it was a tour de force. Late Carl Anderson. Yeah, it was a great song. We did that together. Now, your next album, we're not going to go through all of them, I'm just going to hit the highlights, right? Because basically, all of your albums are were on billboard but the next one was the big one that you did in 2005 entitled pacific coast highway yeah and that stayed on the number one for 11 weeks yes it did how did um, you come up with that with that whole well, well first of all i should say how did you feel with that going on right there you know that's your second you know, album it was a crazy time, time. At that time, the first album, you got to know, I was signed to a label and it filed bankruptcy while it came out. Mm. So it didn't do much at all, even though it was such a personnel on the album. But and I was a little bit disgusted with the business part and I wanted to switch really and get into film writing and composing. But I had another record done just because I liked the music and I figured well, it would be a good business card to have. And it turned out that some neighbors of mine, um, um, the, their daughter, I, I taught her some guitar lesson. And she said, oh, my parents have a record label. And they heard, they heard it and they wanted to sign me. And I figured, well, you know, what the heck? I mean, it'd be nice to have a business card, a small mom and pop label. They cannot throw it away. At least they will do something with it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, the rest is history. The song just moved up the charts and just stayed there. And, and it became the most played song on smooth jazz radio to this day, because, you know, today with only half the radio stations, nobody going to catch the amount of spins that we got in the in the in the five years that this song was really up on the charts, you know, and it's still it's been a, um, I'm, I'm lucky because it became like a classic in the format. Mm -hmm. If I look at my royalty statements, um, it's still being played and still yeah. one of the higher numbers of all the songs I wrote and that, that brings in money. So. It's doing well. That song really changed my career, so to speak. Yes. Now, we're, I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, 2020, you did Caught in the Groove. Right. 2020, you did Caught in the Groove. Now, did you kind of write that during the pandemic? Um, I wrote it before the pandemic. It came out right at the beginning of the pandemic. And I was very pissed about that because, uh, you know, I. I I know I had a good record mm -hmm. and it came out and then all of a sudden there's no gigs. Everything got canceled. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go out and promote it. Um, but that, that record saved me through all that time. There's many musicians that were really hitting some very hard times, especially the ones that heavily relied on touring. But uh, on Caught in the Groove, we had four top 10 hits on one record. Two went all the way to number one. And so uh, that kept me going. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna tell you that's one of my favorite albums. Oh, that's that's one of my my favorite albums. Now we go to your latest album, yeah, which is entitled "Cool Shade." That's right. Now that that's climbing, that's number one on the smooth jazz charts. Now, why don't you tell us about this latest album and how did you come up with the name? I absolutely love the album. I love I love the the album cover. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was done uh, by uh, a young artist uh, that the record label found, a very promising young artist. And uh, um, he came up with the concept. We did a music video, too. 
if you get the chance to check that out on my YouTube channel for nine to five. Um, and the YouTube channel is at nilsguitar.com, uh, of course. Um, but I wrote that album in uh, Germany. Um, I that was still doing COVID. Um, my uh, my my parents fell sick, both of them, and mm -hmm. I had to go over. And I'm a single child, so there's no other family there. I flew over there and took care of them. And my dad passed away, unfortunately. Uh, but my mom is, uh, uh, and he was the one taking care of my mom. So I had to be over there, really arranging her life, finding a, a a person who could take care, like a 24 hour caregiver for her and all that kind of stuff. Uh, spend a lot of time over there and, and kind of to keep my sanity through all of that, that I, I, you know, I wrote and, um, consciously made an effort that I didn't want to write a really sad record because it was a heavy time for me. I wanted to have something uplifting, especially also like we were coming at, at the, you know, two years of COVID and everybody had it up to here with, with masks and, and staying indoors and not being able to see family. I felt we needed really something more uplifting. So um, um, I really, you know, took pride into making sure that because the first thing came out was all ballads um and and the discarded half of them and and i kept a very few uh, uh emotional and very powerful ones but the the but the rest is usually up in, you know my my usual upbeat funky kind of stuff uh that i wanted to really you know to, to bring out and, and and share with the people with the world awesome now what would you define as the most life-changing event so far in your career uh well, certainly the, the 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 Pacific Coast Highway being you know being that great would be certainly one of them. Um, another one, um, I would say also. I mean, my my very first uh, uh, before that uh, was my that doing that getting to know George Benson. Mm -hmm. My very first record, with, I did a duet with George Benson, and and he doesn't just do a duet with anybody. I, I had a um, um, for a family connection. I got to him, and he had a song laying around, and let us do a duet. But before he was agreeing to it, he wanted to meet me. And I remember he came to Los Angeles. We met. We went out to dinner, and then went back to his hotel room. I asked him, you know, George, what's what's your guitar? And he he gave me the Ibanez answer because he's endorsing Ibanez guitars. But then when we went back to his room, he he pulled out like a fifty thousand dollar Takisto jazz guitar. And say, well, Niels, this is my baby. And then he puts it in my hand, sitting in front of me, and said, okay, play. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sitting there in a hotel room with a $50,000 guitar that I hope I don't edge on anywhere. And, and George Benson looking at my fingers. And then so for, for a second, I was stunned. But then I just started jamming. And, and, then, uh, and then the greatest thing happened to George asked me, oh, man, how do you do that? Show me that lick. <laughs> and and we got to trade licks with each other, you know, and that was one of the greatest um, uh, things in my life. Also realizing that a man like George Benson, who we say forgot more than most of us ever learned, you know, is still looking uh, for new ideas and always learning on the instrument and, and coming up with new stuff. And and I kept, um, uh, I took that to heart and, and still trying to improve my playing and my knowledge about music and, and, uh, and the guitar itself. Nice. Now, we all know, I know, you are a phenomenal musician. But what sets your sound apart from other guitarists out there? It's hard to say it for myself. I think um, I approach the guitar like a human voice. You know, I grew up, like, as I said, my favorite music for the longest time was them like Chaka Khan, Al Jarreau, Earth, Wind & Fire, that kind of music, and, and, and really soulful singing. And that's what I try to emulate with the guitar, you know. Uh, the guitar is really my, um, is, is, is my voice, and I use it in the same way as, as a singer would uh, 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 doing an R&B or, or a funky song like that. Now, who would you, if you had anybody that you wanted to collaborate with, who would be your dream collaboration? Anybody? Ah, uh, God. But and now I, I worked with a lot of them that I wanted to. <laughs> with, uh, with Larry Dunn from Earth, Wind, Fire. I worked with Jeff Lorber. Uh, I worked with Gerald Albright, with uh, George Benson. I think Chaka Khan is still on my list that I would love okay. to work with. You know, 
um and um um you know, if, if if it feels right, if I find a good musician, like years back, I got to do a duet with uh, Jeff Golub, and we have a similar understanding and, and, and sensitivity for music, so it was a good match. And I'm glad I got to do a recorded duet with him before he passed away. Um, um, so it's, it's um, I, I, I look for a duet when it kind of makes sense, but we both can, can really have a musical conversation brings that brings joy to each other you know it's not just the mark i don't need the marketing push to uh, a lot of you know guys have such and such on the record featuring so and so just because they're a thing that gives them a better chart position um fortunately i was lucky enough that most of my music moves up the chart without having to do that so i'm not if i do a duet it doesn't have to be for just marketing purposes I really want to find something where okay this is a really cool combination you know yes now would you be able just to give us like a little sample just a little uh, bit of teaser <laughs> i can pull my guitar show us see you in concert now for real i definitely have to come see you in concert now i want to i want to ask you this question and i ask this to all of the artists that i interview because they're you know i love to hear their answers a lot of it is similar but as you know this music the industry is hard the music industry is kind of hard right now what advice would you give to a new artist that is coming into this industry first of all don't try to emulate anybody that's out there try to find your own voice and then if you put something together make sure it is up to the highest standard that you possibly can do it mm -hmm. uh, even if it takes you two years to or five years to put it together it doesn't matter don't waste any good material on 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 just because you don't have the money to go in the studio or something you know, save it up and do it right so you can compete. And uh, and and then the other thing is uh, being an artist is is a job. You know, you got to you got to um, approach it as a business. There's a lot of stuff that you need to do besides just playing guitar or playing your instrument. Uh, you need, you know, present be on social media. You need to have uh, you need to know how to promote yourself, how to get your music out there, how to make the how to get uh, the work and get the name out to, to get the build a following and that's what we're all about right now oh i love it i love it i love that answer i love it love it love it now where can people go or i should to ask you this first what do you have anything coming up that we need to be looking out for like are you going to be performing anywhere um, well, um, I just got back from a West Coast to uh, East Coast tour. I'm I'm doing three dates here. I'm playing in Las Vegas the, this weekend, oh. at Super Bowl party uh, for KUNV, the radio station. Uh, then the weekend after, I'll be at Spagatini's in in Seal Beach, Los Angeles. Hmm. And then I'm going to Oakland, California, uh, on the sixth of March and play Yoshi's. Okay. Um, and then I got to uh, take a quick break and see my mother, take care of some things over in Germany. And then I come back and hopefully by then my agent will have another some tour dates uh, lined up for me. Well, that's that sounds pretty busy right there. You know, I, I, even though I'm over here in Hawaii, I might have to make that trip to Spagatini's or Yoshi's to come see you. Yeah. Or, or I do the reverse and come. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on my bucket list. I haven't been in Hawaii. Wait, that you know what, Niels? We're gonna make that happen. We, we're yeah. gonna make that happen. I, love I promise that. you that. I promise you that. Now, where can people go to find 
your music and you know to give your websites and all of that uh, all that stuff so um first of all i recommend to go to nilsguitar.com n-i-l-s guitar one word dot com that's uh really the sign up sheet for my fan club from there on you get special deals you get uh, notified when i'm playing in your zip code and all that good stuff um but uh the the my actual music website the artist website is nilsmusic.com nilsmusic.com uh where you can buy all my records you can listen to most of them you can download them from there if you like them uh, you can order autographed copies and stuff um but then i'm also socially very um active on facebook um if you follow me at nils guitar i do a show every saturday i'm doing, gonna do one this saturday okay. uh, called nils live from home where i'm playing my music uh, uh live uh, i started doing that during COVID when we didn't have shows and <laughs> and uh um, started from from a little iphone to now to, to a three camera shoot here in my, in my studio uh, uh playing every week if i'm not on the road mm -hmm. and then also my youtube channel where all my music videos are is also nils guitars youtube.com slash nils guitar uh you can follow that and there's uh, there's live videos there is uh um there's instructional videos there's music videos there's all kinds of stuff up there well wow wow and then yeah. Spotify, please find me on Spotify. I just don't know how to tell people to find me on Spotify. Sometimes it's a weird that's a weird link uh -huh. uh, that I cannot pronounce or remember. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, because some people looked for me on Spotify and couldn't find it, but if you type in Niels and Pacific Coast Highway, that usually comes up. It'll on, pop up. Yeah. It'll. So it'll and then up. and then just follow me as an artist, you know. Well, Niels, I thank you so much for being here. You have made my day today oh thank Early. you I, I, you I wish you a, a, a wonderful a wonderful birthday rest of your birthday and, and many more to come okay well thank you so much for being here and to my audience aloha until next time aloha and god bless Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.